Good morning. Michael is the name of the archangel. That is, he is God's chosen leader of all his angels. Lucifer is the name of God's angel that was in heaven, and from what many interpret, a leader in worship of God. However, he wasn't content with his position, and he wanted to be equal with God, meaning he wanted to be worshipped. But he was created by God and was not equal with God. That was dishonest. But evidently, he insisted and gathered support from other angels. Uh, together, they led a rebellion against God. And God, who is holy, had to judge them for their sin. They were justly condemned for their sin. There was no defense for their actions. They were guilty and they had to be punished. They were cast out of heaven. And now they all await their final imprisonment in hell, the lake of fire. Until that time, God has continued to sovereignly rule the universe. And being omnipotent, all-powerful, uh, there's no legitimate threat to him. As omniscient, all-knowing, he has chosen to allow Lucifer, now called the devil, and his cohorts to move about in certain places and in certain ways throughout the universe. Well, that's because God chooses to use them for his eternal purposes. I remember when the devil had to ask permission to go after Job, and God permitted it, but with boundaries. Remember the story a couple of days ago when some fallen angels did not honor the boundaries God gave them? He judged them again and chained them that time, so they are not able to move about as they did. Well, here in this passage, Jude 1, 9, we read, But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment like the false teachers of the day, but he said, The Lord rebuke you. Now, there are varying interpretations about this incident, which is recorded in the Jewish document, The Assumption of Moses. I find the best one to be the most obvious one, that as Moses was chosen to lead God's people out of the land of bondage and into the promised land, uh, the devil knew this and sought to stop him. But Michael was on mission from God to protect Moses, and he did. Also remember that Moses is a type of Christ, saving the people. And this wasn't a one-time incident. Uh, we read in Matthew and Luke, where the devil went after Jesus to try and lure him away from the Father. And what did he want? What he always wanted, and what he still wants from anyone. All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. So, the devil actually thought he had a chance that God the Son would reject the Father and switch alliances to him and worship him? Jesus responded as we should. Uh, when we are tempted, uh, he quoted the scriptures, uh, the truth, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So, the devil is contending for the body of Moses, but Michael reminds him, the Lord rebuke you. That word rebuke means to forbid. That's all he had to say. And it's not a blaspheming reaction like the false teachers acted. It's just the position of faith, the truth. Devil, the Lord forbids it. That's all he had to say. The devil's battle was ultimately with the Lord. And even powerful Michael would not put himself in the middle of all that. He just spoke in his assignment and spoke the truth. Now, when Jude writes it, he is contending for the faith against false teachers who are trying to convince people that God's grace is his permission to sin. Well, that isn't true. And Jude is proving it by reminding his audience of Jesus' message of repentance, historical examples of angels and people who sinned 
and were judged for it? This incident is another reminder. Jude contends the truth that God's grace is his power to not sin, but rather to live a holy life. When Jude references Michael in his words, it's a reminder to the devil that he can't have what he wants. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord forbids you from having it. And the point? The Lord forbids us to sin. He always has. He always will. For the false teachers to say that God grants permission to sin, well, that's outrageous. And Jude has aptly proven that. Well, in our day, false teachers have risen again and are informing people that because of God's grace, His loving heart and favor, they can now sin, even sexually. What was forbidden in God's law is no longer forbidden. In fact, they even say that it is no longer sin. And those of us who contend for the faith are maligned as haters, homophobic, intolerant, dangerous, and other emotionally charged words that can put us on the defensive. But what I continue to learn is that when you have God on your side, truth on your side, you can just stand your ground and speak the truth in love. Like Michael, what a great reference Jude chose. We just stand our ground and say, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord forbids that. He does. Read his word. It is clear, and we are to hold fast to it. Well, let's close our week with the scripture memory verses, Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. That's us. Let's thank God for his grace. Oh Lord, we were lost, but you have found us. We were blind, but we see. Thank you for your amazing grace. Now, offer your prayers. God bless you.